all for one family on stage. Their first gig, The Cars. It didn't go in that we could actually be meeting our producer or that this could be a major record year for us. If you feel the emotion in every song, you give across the emotion of the song. You have been a wonderful audience and we will remember this. We will be back. When you're put in a situation where you have to perform, where you have to deliver, no matter what, something happens. That's why we're doing it. We're doing it because we love it. Hi, my name is Barry McCall. I work with the Corps in their seismic early days, taking some photographs to promote tours and records and CDs. And you're listening to the Corps Cast. Hi, and welcome to episode 14 of Corps Cast. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode focused on the Corps' first album, Forgiven Not Forgotten. Following on from the last episode in the season, our focus and attention now comes towards the photography that was used to promote the first tour for Forgiven Not Forgotten, as well as the photographer featured in the Love to Love You music video, Barry McCall. Barry's primary focus in his work is fashion photography. And as you'll hear, this had no small impact on the look of the band for the promotional photos taken during this period. After a career working with greats such as Naomi Campbell and U2, as well as clients like Chanel. How did his path finally cross with the cause? Find out this and more as I began our interview, asking how a career in photography all started for him. Enjoy. Thank you so much for being so willing to come on. It's great that you've agreed to be a part of this project and to discuss your work, specifically the Love to Love You music video and the work you did with the band on their tour and promotion photography. I begin each episode asking my guest how they came to be working in the industry that they worked in and up to that point, what they'd done prior to meeting or any contact with the cause or their management or the label. How on earth did photography become you? <laughs> um, I'm doing it a long, long time, um, ever since I was a kid um, and uh, always taking pictures of uh, you know, to the family, the family camera on holidays and stuff. So it started from there. So at a very, very early age, um, even to the to the extent that my mum would be looking around her house for the for her Kodak Instamatic camera to go on holiday, and I would be playing with it without filming it, whining it on and clicking. That's the wow. kind of thing that I was. I also hung out with my mum a lot because she was a seamstress. So I'd actually be in the early 70s as as what's going on at the moment was lots of strikes and my father was brought out on strike I think for about nine months and uh, so my mum would bring she was a, she went back into work as a seamstress and she'd bring all her work home so yeah. I'd sit there helping her so I, there's always another fashion and then between that and then I love photography uh one of my one of my brothers started doing a night course in photography and both myself and myself watched this show on television called me and my camera with David Bailey now I it's you know I knew a little bit about David Bailey when I was a kid, mm. um, but I saw this TV show of him rambling around his old haunts on the East End of London, and he was photographing everything from barbed wire to corrugated metal fences. And I was going, what's he, what's he doing? And next of all, he comes out in the dark room and he holds up these fiber based prints, and I'm going, good lord, <laughs> yeah, what happened from there to there? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Me. so um, and I've always had a love for old classic movies, obviously uh, film noir, and you know. <laughs> And then from there, went into college, did my did my study, came out, assisted in a, a rather thriving photographic uh, business in, in, in Dublin here. And it just so happened, maybe it was in the, in, I don't know, sprinkling of a bit of fairy dust or something. But when I was going out in business, it was the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and Dublin was on a serious crest of a wave. There was something going on. It's almost their equivalent, not quite as world dominating as London um, in the swinging 60s, but it was definitely something going in the zeitgeist that we we were all looking at each other. What's going on here? You know, there's, uh, lots of media people from around the world were starting to hang out, meet up by houses, and all these rather amazing clubs start, start springing up, which we'd never seen the likes of before. So I started my business in, in, in that period, a very, very exciting period of time in Dublin. Um, um, and out from that, Obviously, the likes of U2 were there. There's a couple mm. of other fantastic bands that never quite made it here, here away, like Hot House Flowers, Stunning. Yep. Something happens. There was a whole raft, and they were brilliant. And the Dublin was just a, a heaving place. So I happened to work in the fashion, in the portrait, and what that really lends 
itself too is any any rock and roll star who's really tuned in in Ireland would be looking at the names. They not they don't they want rock and roll photographers for one thing. Mm. But they want a fashion photographer for another. You know, there's one that's yeah. like more polished where the rock and roll photography slightly edgy would be this, would be that. Where if they want a, a kind of a bit more of a I don't know, studio based uh, controlled environment, they go to a fashion photographer and, and that's how I come to be in um um in the uh, I suppose <laughs> Uh, intersection with the with the with the course it was it was a kind of a funny one how i met please tell me more i'd love to know i was based out of a fantastic place called the factory on barrow street um and it was the most creative place uh you'd have the likes of david bowie uh elvis costello mike hutchins mm. crash test dummies youtube name but a few they would record rehearse um you had uh, me being photography, you had uh, filmmakers, you had everybody all based out of this building, dance studios, you had just just great fun down uh, around Grand Canal Dock area of Dublin. Mm -hmm. And um, I was we were working away one day, myself and my own assistant, and we were just coming from one of the studios into the central cafe in the building, and we were just literally getting ourselves together. Next of all, these three girls and one boy walked down the corridor all dressed in black and my assistant looks at me and goes what the f you <laughs> it's gone. i've got no idea but i'm intrigued yeah. so from there the um it's really funny the guys were either in rehearsing or doing a little bit of recording but uh their manager john was in and whilst you're in there john said while i'm in this building i'm gonna get barry a call so that's how it happened so literally that quick so we ended up doing some some press shots with him. obviously after seeing the first time then it the explosion happened. They had just obviously done the recording. Everything was being produced, and they were ready for the yeah big push out. And um, yeah, wow. So it was just a, a chance meeting in the same building. And as as we've often heard um, through the stories of others through season one, and specifically their their, their rise through Forgiven Not Forgotten, um, John taking opportunity by both hands and running as far as he can with it. And, yeah, and you you being in that mix and the your availability at that time and the intrigue of wh what is going on here. So they were in the building, they were rehearsing, and they were they were filming something else at the same time. Yeah, I I didn't see any of the filming. Although having said that, um, when we started working with them, we, I got introduced to Kieran Tannen, mm -hmm. which you, 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 I'm sure he's been referenced before. Um, but Kieran just came up to me and just sort of said, when you're shooting today, do you mind if I do some BTS stuff? I said, knock yourself out. So that's how I met Kieran. So um, some of that imagery ended up being used in a, in a video down along the line. So yeah, I I happen to have the great honor of uh, speaking with Kieran. He would have a, he would have a lot more information. I mean, he's filmed so much with the guys. You know, basically he would have their he would have their life story. I'd say you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we we went through yeah from from yeah dot it was um really fascinating really intriguing um kieran specifically mentioned how much fun you were on those shoots and in the studio uh, it, it was so so yeah I'm, I'm interested in how those shoots went together by the looks of it from from what i've been able to unearth and see down my collection of course stuff um for decades now it it looks like with the cause in those early days, there was three main shoots. Um, I don't know what you recall or t if you have any access to timelines of when or what was shot where. That's the that's the tricky part, right? Yeah, it is. I think they they did their album and perhaps first single photography. Mm -hmm. uh, and that done um, in a session, I think it, it was either done in a train station. I'm just trying to recollect again, you're asking me, it's what nearly the guts of 30 years, I think. Yeah. Um, well, I've interviewed the the Guzmans uh, from LA who who did the main photography on their cover album cover shoot, uh, um, a few singles for the yeah. first album and the rear of the cover, et cetera, and a few promotional shots. Yeah. Um, and around that time, had mm -hmm. you already seen album shots? I'd seen a little. I'd seen a little glimpse of them, like yeah, so. Uh, the, that that particular photographer had set a really good tone. Like his oh, yeah. vision for for that band was just was bang on the money. It really yeah. was. Um. So 
again, being being another photographer, when they come in, you try and put your own stamp on it. Obviously, oh. you're taking cues, going, I think Andre looked great that way. I think Sharon looked brilliant. Keep Jim straight on looking. So, you know, you see little things, you go, I'm yeah. going to pick up on that, and then I'm going to run with my own thing. Um, so we, I loved the look in that, but I think we wanted to do one version where by hair, everything was all slick back yeah. and make it a bit more of a kind of, I think you, you probably know that image, mm -hmm. um, uh, like all black suited and a bit more, again, pretty noir -y. It was like one big, strong key light, little, little drop shadows below the nose and stuff. They look very strong. Just wanted to do something different with them, you know? And then we did one shot that was super colorful as well, because I've literally seen them in black and white or else all wearing black. So we did, again, you have to understand it, the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> so we tried to introduce a lot of color, like whether the uh, whether the guys liked it or not. I think the imagery, they look really, really bad in it. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I love it when they're all slightly a little bit more wearing their, wearing their comfortable dark clothes and stuff, you know? Yeah. From what I saw, it looked... I assumed that the album shots were done first and then mm -hmm. you were in part influenced by the style with the slick back look, but, but a slight change mm -hmm. um, from your memory. Is that the first shoot you did with them? That slick yeah. back? Look? You're going to, um, I, again, it's just a train of thought here. Um, I did one shoot, not for promo for the band, but it was a magazine uh, over here in the early nineties called people pr pronounced it D side, but it was actually decide. Yeah. And again, there was a it, like uh, there was because of the, the the buzz going on about the band. They said, "Can we can we can you photograph this band?" So I said, w "What like w what's the accessibility?" And they said, "The you know the usual thing. They don't have all that of time. They're doing some press, and they're going to be in I think it was the Westbury Hotel in Dublin City Centre. So I think I may have had a chance to photograph them there. Just trying to remember whether it was before or after." But um, that was us. All I had was I had there was no backdrops, there was no nothing, not a whole lot of time. So I got uh, all the band to bounce around on a bed. Why not, right? <laughs> hotel, what's in a hotel? A bed? Is, can we yeah. get your biggest bed? Excellent. Can we get four people mucking around? Job done. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so that was the candid one. But then I say I had a little bit more control on the on the second setup with the guys. So yeah, yeah. Just, yeah that first set. Um, seem to be used for a lot of promotion um, around their first tour for Ireland, specifically. Yeah. And for the, as far as I know, for Asia as well. Asian Correct. tour is a good bit of, they, they, that image was used a good bit for so. It's very, it, it's, it's, it's odd to see how, I guess, the management or the band or the record company decided to use certain album shots or behind the scenes album shots as well, or unused or unpublished album shots for certain promotion in certain countries, and then went on to use your shots in certain other areas. Have you any understanding why, or is it just you've done the shoot and it's out of your hands by then? It's, um, I, <laughs> there's a bit of that, I'd say, but uh, the, 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 the people in the know may have said, I think this kind of look would suit this market a little bit more, perhaps, you know? Um, maybe they weren't, they don't it's not they, they didn't appreciate the the album cover maybe they think this is a bit more you know or maybe they felt that the the, the album cover the images from that have gone around enough and here's another side to the band and this is promoting their tour over in the east or whatever you know as, mm -hmm. as you say it's with the powers that be and sometimes i just have to hand over the imagery and away they go uh john, john hughes moves in mysterious ways so we both know that yeah he's a great man so indeed indeed had you any understanding of the sound of the band when you first did shooting for them, or was it just the the concept and the look of the band at that point? No, I knew that. I, well, I knew one sound. It was like Runaway was was out there, mm. um, and so I knew, like it was, it was beautiful, um, and I knew the look of the album. So like, yeah, that's all. I, but I knew I knew they're kind of like Irish rock. Yeah, um, you know slightly folky in, in in some respects as well and then with a bit of great guitar over yeah so i knew i, I knew that i knew their sound and i knew their look so yeah i was for, fairly familiar with them by the time i got around to shooting them there's there's also a shoot that seems to be different from the slicked back shoot <laughs> i don't know what we're gonna name these shoots anyway um where there was definitely uh it's a white background there's leather jackets it's a little more edgy on on what they're wearing but there's a chair involved in the shoot at some point as well Good Lord. 
have you got this photographic reference in front of you of what i've got is so poor qualities you'll have to forgive me but let me that's no problem it's you know it's because it's pre, uh, pre digital days um a good bit of this uh, would be shot on uh, some would be shot on transparency and then some sure. will be shot on an egg but a lot of it would have been transparency so as soon as it leaves me unless i have test frames of it um uh this shoot oh wow it's been referenced on the cause official socials and stuff as as copyright to you. So okay, I'm go. assuming it is. Um, but it's very that particular portrait, more portrait version of, of this shoot is different to the other shots in the shoot. But um, if I so we've got the yeah, that's, that, that one. that's your that's your real noir light. Yeah. Front. It's a different look for the guys, you know, I yeah. definitely a different look for the guys. But wonderful, especially yeah. the just the tailoring and Jim not needing the extra shoulders is yeah <laughs> i think jim looks rock and roll there yeah yeah really good it does. Um, um it's this shoot oh my god yeah it's, that's that's like um it's a kind of a we do that like hazy kind of light all right it's all bleach but it looks like it's jim's jim's caught a bit too much by it but yeah um, sometimes these images that would appear they're like in between shots as well you know when you're shooting and that's then the thing happens and i think i that's what i believe um I, we would do this kind of light source that's very hazy back, almost like sunlit look, which is that's the that's definitely an image from. And yeah. then what I believe the other portrait you're showing me is towards the end of the shoot, I'd say again, it could be John sort of saying, can I have a, like a, a sweet portrait of them in that look? Yeah. So when, when we are working with the likes of a band of the stature of Decors, we don't just do one setup at a time. It's almost like a production line. You would have, um, mm -hmm. when we're shooting in the factory, I believe we had about three or four sets built so the band would be moved from one set, da, 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 then onto the other, then onto the other. You know, it's it's a way of saving their time um, and trying to get as much out of them on the day for the management. So yeah, I'd say I'd say that's what happened there for sure. The reason I particularly reference this shoot, even though you know it's part of your work with the band, but some of it ended up on the singles in the US. That's the first I've ever seen. Would you believe that? That. First time I've seen that, yeah. So yeah, there was a whole US promo version and cassette version, um, which used shots from this shoot wow. that ended up on a, a physical release with your work on the front. So oh, yeah. it's it's beautiful shots, um, but <laughs> everywhere else in the whole world, other than the US, uh, yeah. the promo release of this ended up with the album photography on it. To wow, be wow, I didn't know that, that's cool. I'm glad to bring something to you. That's good. <laughs> something, something new, it, and it looks cool, and it's sought after by the by fans because it, it, it's different from from the the look of the band, as it were. But it's still um, of its time, and it yeah. still fits with the aesthetic of the band of, of that period. So yeah, it's definitely yeah. of its of its time. You know what sure. I mean? The, the guys would have um, the guys would be so tuned into their look, you know. Um, but I think they were a bit more. Uh, what's the word um moldable at that stage they would have a fairly strong idea about how they look but they were open to suggestion you know nice. youth and whatever and then and the, maybe it's naivety on the on the photographer's behalf thinking they can do this with the band and they were very yeah okay we're on for this let's do it you know but yeah. now they be like they they know themselves a lot more at this stage you know they know what works best for them so hmm. but yeah that's great that's wonderful to see it's really cool i'm glad i'm glad to share that with you <laughs> There were some promotional posters done. Uh, I don't know which company did them in, in and around Ireland in 96, where uh, one of the band, I think Caroline wearing the, the faux leather jacket, uh, is sat on a chair in the shot. But I couldn't find that reference shot uh, to sort of throw it your way so you could maybe spark a memory of the shoot. But, um, but yeah, that, that was that shoot. I have a large, I would say fairly large, newspaper uh, archive regarding the cause and how they were publicized and how they were publishing their gigs at the time and this is just one of the the many tour posters for the original forgiven not forgotten tour as promoted around ireland and you can see your shot prominently in place at the bottom there so yeah beautiful work thank you <laughs> great is that shot yours no i didn't think it was that's cross processed that's the old technique of um and I don't believe I used it on them on that particular shoot. And I don't think that Andrea's hair was styled up like that. It's not credited, which is... Which is a pity. 
No credits on anything, um, but it's the cover of the Love to Love You single. The same cover was used worldwide, fine. Um, but internally, in some versions, they had a special edition with a, a, a calendar set of cards mm -hmm. that you could then use it as a standee for, for cards. And the inside of the Love to Love You single used your shots for the calendar. So again, your work f on physical releases. I remember that. The original, I think I had a blue floor on that. Yeah, it was all corridors built. And the guys, we had these kind of like walls and blue floor and white walls and whatever. The guys just moved through. And, there you go. They just moved through and we just snapped them as they went. Yeah, okay, I remember that now. Yeah, so there, there's some stuff that was used. But yeah, I, I was assuming that the cover wasn't yours because uh, I would have, would have assumed that it would have been credited and that it looked like any other shoot we have and it, and it doesn't. So it's nice mm -hmm. to get clarity that that's not you, even though we have no idea again <laughs> it's a pity you know as i say the, in the days of transparencies when when we were shooting sometimes the client requested you know the a tranny so it's like a, a, literally as you're shooting that's what you give to the client and we don't have any record of it any again it just goes out yeah uh, whereas if it's anything on color negative uh we would have holding we would have holding on or we'd at least have the negatives of it and i'd be able to you know fish them out for you and reprint from them and stuff but yeah I guess I should move on to that more colourful shoot and that more prepared photo shoot by the band um, because it was used in the promotion and ended up in a music video and you ended up in a music video for the band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a turn out for the books. Um, can you remember how that shoot first came about? Again, the, the setup for the shoot was for our band promotion. Mm. fantastic but the, the fact that Kieran came up and sort of said I'm following these guys for a few days here will we shoot some stuff around you I was going yeah absolutely knock yourself out um I was fairly immobile I had a broken leg at that time wow. this is really this is bizarre so the footage whilst I was shooting I was up a ladder with a broken leg and it was in the times when I smoked as well so I'm at the top of a ladder with a cigarette in one hand and a broken leg which is slightly out of frame uh, <laughs> photographing the band and uh, when I look back at it now like some of my assistants go we know you were in a video and they do the search on it and the, mm. like, I just look at myself with the horrors but uh, yeah Kieran that was it they mixed between our studio shoot and the um the american aircraft carrier jfk that's the mix and that was in dublin harbor at the time so mm. band were out on that so that's where that whole video again kieran putting all this footage together on but that was that was good fun yeah it, it looked fun they they're wearing the same outfits or at least some of the same outfits from the shoot that was obviously done prior to that is it yeah, the same hair and makeup it's the same day there we go they literally left our studio that day and took the uh, the makeup artist on that was zoe clark and the hairdresser was james mooney and as far as i can remember i think the stylist could have been sonia lennon i think uh but they took the assistants i think they took, maybe took one makeup assistant with them onto the jfk i think we headed off on a different job somewhere else mm. but they literally left the studio in the factory and went over onto the jfk wow that footage so you're bang on the money yeah it's the same yeah. same gear same makeup same everything wowzers that... i'd say that was some day for the guys it wasn't long enough as it was being with me they had to continue on and uh start <laughs> well, they... stuff on the, on the on the aircraft carrier well as they well. shot stuff on the aircraft carrier and then the same evening they did a gig there you go yeah <laughs> that's work that's why they are where they are <laughs> <laughs> correct you know? yeah yeah that hard work is yeah yeah that's one thing i can say whenever like whenever i've had the, the the privilege and pleasure to work along with them like they're great they're 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 so good to work with you know take everything on board just really nice fun people i get a great old kick out of working with them so
Kieran, who is obviously at the shoot, videoing you shooting them, uh, he names that spaghetti when it's kind of so insular like yeah. that. But um, yeah, yeah. he was saying that you were asking them to do interesting and, and out there and, and crazy things. Smile here. Don't smile. Look unhappy here. Do that. Can you, do you have any recollection of, I mean, it might just be your general working style, but what you wanted from that shoot? Because obviously it's it's so different visually from their previous shots or anything else we've seen from the band in that period because of the amount of color and expression they have. It's it's iconic in that. I think that um, maybe John may have had a word in my ear before and I just said, give us something different. You know, we have the we have that particular kind of style of shot. That's one, but like, can we have something different for this? Maybe for some of the markets, they may need some smiles. Maybe they look at like a little bit out of control, a little bit yeah. not so. So yeah, and then you're feeding that through to the band when you think it's an appropriate time or else I'm a devil for saying things uh, that I try and provoke reactions in people. Um, not to upset them, but yeah. just to try and break down that, you know, that um, that kind of look that everybody would have in a photograph. Mm -hmm. you know, something different. So I'd say there was a bit of that kind of going on. So Kieran's <laughs> Kieran's right in saying that, yeah. But I, I, I quite, um, if somebody's doing what I want them to do, I won't say a word. I'll just let it flow. No, nope. some people are, you know, or some days it just works like that. But uh, I, I'm quite a director when I'm working. Uh, not not in a bossy way, but like, mm. you know, for the first for the first while when I'm shooting with people, I see the way their head moves, the way their hands, their gestures. And then as soon as I get used to what they're doing, then I'll start tweaking, nudging and suggesting. You know, you figure out like it's like yeah. when I when I start to portrait in somebody, I won't start barking orders or I'll actually say, hey, listen, let's see here. Let's see there. And as soon as I, I go, oh, got it. And then I boom, start really honing in on it. You know, mm. I'm sure much, a lot of photographers are the same. But the one thing we don't do is we don't leave our subjects there in silence. You try and it's a communication thing all the, all the yeah. while, you know, Um yeah, you just don't leave them there, <laughs> like looking in the air, like feeling like they're in splendid isolation, try and communicate and get a little bit of um, eye contact and a little bit of interest going on. So, yeah, that's a really great insight to to your working style, as well as, yeah, to, to a degree what the, the band would have experienced those years ago. So thank you. It's really cool. You're welcome. Do you work or do you use Polaroids? In the night, well, 90s and early 2000s, everything was shot Polaroid and then either onto transparency or film. And then sometimes my, the whole medium or my, my end product would actually be Polaroid. But then when Polaroid went bang, yeah, uh, end, they, they're back again with the impossible project, mm. have bought all their equipment and they're trying desperately to reproduce what Polaroid had. Well, from, you know, larger format, I would, I used to work on a four by five camera and, a, and an eight by 10 camera, which are big beasts, Polaroids that were that size at the end of it, you know, um, they're trying to get it back there. Like there's some interesting effects going on. I'm, I'm loving it, but, um, yeah, we used to, we used to shoot so much Polaroid to be, you know, on an average day, there'd easily be about a hundred Polaroid shots. Wow. And we try and keep control of them. Yeah. And I think there's a little box down there, down in my basement that has um, some Polaroids, but like you'd find makeup artists can have a reference of that. And hairdresser can have a reference of that. Stylist can yeah. have, have a reference of all the garments we used in that day. So the, everybody has them stuck in the job books from that order. The you know, that's, yeah. that's where they all go. Yeah. yeah, which is what I've got. That's what I've got a lot of uh, scans of nowadays. It, it's uh, when build, building this project and, and especially talking to the stylists and stuff like that. It's yeah, uh, it's scans of their workbook of the day and their receipts and stuff of the day and being like, yeah. oh, wow, this is really yeah, this is really something. At the time you were being filmed, had you were you used to that? Was it something that you were entirely comfortable with or? Because I'm assuming at this point you didn't know that it would end up in a music video. No, no idea. But like, it, I have to be honest, on a day like that, you really are tuning out. Like this, maybe people are a bit more uh, visually savvy these days because of social media and stuff. Mm. But I, I just said, I really need to work on this. Like there's so much that we needed to get out of that day. And Kieran is quite, um, what's the word? Stealth-like. <laughs> around he's not a, a loud character when he's on set so i was just working away so he was just he was just grabbing little impromptu moments and stuff so no i did like it, it i wasn't prepared and nor did i mind 
and it was a pleasant surprise when I saw myself up on the screen in the video afterwards. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> the, well, yeah, I guess you have to live with it now. But uh, yeah. I do. Um, Cigarette in hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm. We won't tell anyone. We won't tell anyone. Um, a lot of the footage was also used in the documentary of the rise of the band that Kieran ended up making from all of his stealth footage uh, yes. from day one. So yeah, the something else in the meantime documentary features parts of of you in it as well. Um, I think pretty much, I think it's exactly the same footage. So I don't think it's anything new. Um, but you're in a documentary as well. And then that was then remade into a larger documentary that then was released in the mid 2000s called All the Way Home, which included another re-edit of that documentary. So there's you're you're, you're in you're in the cause timeline <laughs> multiple times um, <laughs> with your broken leg and cigarette in hand, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, yeah, yeah, yeah. the documentary in question does reveal some newer footage. Um, but it, it specifically focuses on images of John and the band being taken by yourself. Was it a kind of a conscious effort by you to put John in in those images, or did he request that, or the band? Yeah, no, I, no, I definitely got him in towards the end. It's a, that real film noir, like you know, the real strong light. Mm. There, his hair is all slick back as well, so I can yeah. I can remember him in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I think I thought it was a good opportunity to get him with the. The, uh, I would, he's not a Spengali, but he's definitely the, like, you know, uh, for want of a better word, but, but I definitely wanted to include him with the band. So, yeah, I, I can remember that uh, vividly. Yeah, because we have a very, we don't have a huge, especially on the promotion sheet side and stuff, we don't have a huge amount of him with the band. And he's very much influential. You know, he's he's that fifth member that that's not seen and, and is certainly not in the limelight. So it was, it was lovely to see at least some shots of Polaroids of him and them together. Um, yeah, I wonder, cool. like, if, like on timeline wise, Simon, would you even have an inkling of the date and year on that? Uh, you are looking at the love to love you. The color shoot stuff has got to be um, July, early July 96. OK. Uh, so that means the slick back stuff is before then. Yeah. And the album was released end of September 95. So you've got between September 95 and summer 96. It's be within there, you've got at least two photo shoots. Okay. Listen, would you do me a favor and leave that with me as well? Because like all my, all my negatives are stored like in a big lock up and stuff. Good. So anything that's pre what 2003 2004 is all negatives and they're all stored everything else from then on in is digital like yeah. we have control over our digital but um yeah going back through boxes and boxes of negatives it takes a little time like if i do have the time in the next little while and i come up with something whether it be a polaroid or the, the original group shot um black and white of the band i'll i'll, I'll get in touch and get, send you anything over. would be wonderful yeah It'd be fun for myself if usually in them job bags there would be a Polaroid or two plus the negatives plus reference. You know, so let me have a let me have a little look back if there is anything of interest in there. I would say a lot of it was transparency and just this <laughs> distributed, you know. But there could be something in there. You never know. A little gem here. Would you think you'd have any reference to dates as well? Would that be possible? I have, yeah, like I, every job I have would have a, a, um, a job date on it. It's just, it just requires me. That was a very period, like sometimes I'd be doing, oh God. Yeah. Some days, like in that period of time, I think we'd be shooting 60 days straight, all, you know, lots of different jobs going on. Wow. And if you a break and then you go on again, you, you know, it was kind of crazy times. Um, but yeah, I can, uh, let me have a little look now that I know where you're, I just take out a few boxes and let's see what, let's see what happens. Oh, but no, I'll definitely have a look. I'm intrigued myself now. So Oh, that's good. It's yeah. nice to nice to think that I've sparked that interest to you. But then then it's, it's it's you know, it's thirty years ago now. So it... Yeah, I did I'm doing well. I obviously I started when I was twelve, so I'm uh <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that's thirty years. It's scary, you know. <laughs> good yeah. lord, right. Yeah, again, it's one of those objects we we just won't mention. It's fine. Yeah. Um I can't I can't really not talk about your incredible work with Sharon's solo album. Um, but before I do, is there anything else I'm missing after the Love to Love You stuff? No, I'd be like, you'd, you'd guess the chance to do um, portraits of the guys for 
for some newspapers, interviews and stuff, which mm. I have done, the majority of it being with Andrea because the way that the, the press would be all over yeah. her. Over there. And um, yeah, and then I was lucky enough for, um, I'm just where I went. I don't know whether again it came through John, Sharon, or um, Rob, art director. Um, From Style of Rouge. Yeah, oh, Style of Rouge. That's the ones, yeah. Rob. Yeah, it's great. Um, well, they gave me a shout for that, um, and it was brilliant. Um, that was actually shot in Hammersmith. No way. Yeah. An old, um, geez, you wouldn't call it nunnery. What would you call it? <laughs> um, is, there, is, there, is there such a thing as a nunnery? I don't know. A, a, an ecclesiastical uh, building very close to one of my old favourite pubs called The Dove. So pretty close to Hammersmith Bridge. And that's where that was shot. It's a, it's an amazing old quirky house right in the Thames. Wow, I I never knew it was. It was yeah, that's a couple of hours drive for me. So that's that's a nice. There news. you go. But yeah, yeah. You, you your 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 work features heavily on just about every <laughs> promo single. Um, they went to town. They went to town with it. Really did. Yeah. yeah. That was that was really good fun. Like we got a lot out of that day. Um, it, who was who was with me? I think yeah, Christine Luch was with me. Uh, makeup. We got so much out of that day. Uh, lots of shots from way looking down on Sharon. Uh, mm. Lots of her sitting in hallways with her with the violin in background. Mm. Uh, remembering most of it was like beautiful. And then uh, one of the outtakes from that, I ended up using in my book and my exhibition because there's one shot we got an outtake of Sharon, um, like cracking up. But here's me asking her to be very serious on the staircase, and she lost her reason. So bang, got it. And yeah. I was very happy with that. Yeah, uh, I, I've I've seen pictures of her the exhibition with it on the wall, and it's a, it's yeah. a beautiful shot. It's a beautiful yeah. the whole the whole shoot is incredible for for her first solo, and it it just enough of the color, the textures, her the instrument. It is just amazing work, honestly. Thank you very much. We we love we love doing it. Um, as I said, she was embarking on her solo, so it was an into the unknown for her. So mm -hmm. it was great that they, they chose me to, to to do it. I was privileged and I'm very proud of the results. And like they're they're still in my book and I will still show them off. So mm -hmm. is there anything else that you think is worth mentioning or uh, an amusing story that happened that I don't know about or that's worth telling or that you thought I would ask that I haven't? Oh, like the only the, the only other things is like because you've worked with them as you've mentioned one single I like there's been various skews you get to you get to know somebody on a professional basis like that it's great but like then occasionally you click with somebody you don't always you can you know you can get great results out of a day but then you can also end up liking the person at the end of it and they go actually you know I like the cut of their jib or like their mm. bit of and I remember being asked a couple of years after we shot the um, Sharon solo uh, project, um, uh, the her, her manager at the time gave me a shout, and he just sort of said, "Listen, Sharon's travelling uh, with Oxfam to Tanzania uh, on a charitable endeavour, and she sort of said we would love you to cover it. Would you travel with us?" And so I spent, um, I think it was about about a week travelling around um, Tanzania, like in rainforests up the side of mountains, and in, in what we were told was a bus, but was actually a truck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was surprised by how, no matter how, like we could have been in a truck for eight, nine hours traveling to a particular location where she had to speak to these mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful people that we were that we were meeting. And sure, shooting up out great, looked brilliant, <laughs> chatted away. So she was fantastic. So I saw another side of her there, and that was a, a really good project to work on. So yeah, with Oxfam in Tanzania. And then various other sort of projects, like I've even ended up photographing some of the girls' weddings, which I'm not a wedding photographer, but uh, the two two of the girls' weddings, uh, the, the one of the one of the images, uh, they were they were kind enough to let me use them, but they feature in my book as well as double page spreads because to say I'm not a wedding photographer, but we managed to get something really kind of great fun out of out of um, each of each of the celebrations that we were able to use. So it's great. Yeah, what a tribute to your working relationship with them that you would be not only invited for for an endeavor that is not particularly press focused, I guess, and that you're trusted to to cover things like a celebration, like a wedding. Is yeah, that's that's special. Even though you're not a wedding photographer, but you're. The no, I definitely am not. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody will ask me, and I'll sort of say, no, no, I'm not. But like, <laughs> if you want somebody to to cover the particular event in 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 my kind of way, yeah. 
you'll do it, you know. So um, yeah, we were we were able to work on on on, on two of the guys two of the guys' weddings, which was good fun. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Thank you. We've seen what it was like in front of the lens for the Love to Love You video and the promotional stills, etc. It's been lovely to hear more of the thoughts and the working relationship you've had with the band over decades now. Um, so thank you so much for, for taking the time and giving us that enlightenment and uh, that peek behind the curtain of your your working day, really. it's It's been really lovely. You're more than welcome. I had good fun and it's brought back some good memories to me too. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All the best. Right. Cheers, son. Bye-bye. A huge thanks goes to Barry for taking his time and being so willing and free and candid with his comments and insights into what it was like to work with the band back in 1996. Barry was also incredibly kind with his time and delved into his archives to share images from the photo shoot. Links to some examples of these never before seen images from Barry's shoots with the band can be found in the show notes, so please do go check those out. Another word of thanks also needs to go out to you, the listeners. The show has now surpassed over 5,000 listens um, across all its platforms. Um, Wherever you're listening, thank you so much. If you wish to discuss with other fans that are listening, there's multiple ways you can do this. We have our own Discord server. Feel free to jump to the comments if you're listening via YouTube. Uh, I activated threads, so I should be posting a few behind-the-scenes photos of maybe me recording, etc. in the future there. As always, please feel free to follow on Instagram. And all the ways you can listen to the show or connect with us can be found at causecast.com. If you'd like to get in touch with myself directly, feel free to use the email address causecast at icloud.com. Please do leave a review of the show on the platform you're listening to. The preferred review would be through Apple Podcasts, if at all possible. And thank you for those that have taken the time to share their comments. They're always so encouraging to read. And it's so lovely to hear the impact the show's having on the fan community. Thank you for listening. And until next time, you've been listening to CauseCast.